Rebuilding a Bernack Vulcan model steam engine toy. Part 12. With a collection of parts to make a new boiler, the job starts by making a suitable centre flue using a short length of copper pipe, followed by machining the gunmetal top cap. The centre flue is a slightly larger diameter than the original centre flue, and luckily the original centre flue is a good fit inside the new pipe. What I propose to do is chop up the old centre flue and use part of it as it was originally made to do, supporting the brass chimney. I measured the length of the original centre flue, subtracting the part that supports the chimney, and here's a part of the original centre flue in the chuck of my Boxwood lathe, having a little bit of turning treatment. This, by the way, is a brass tube, if you look at the colour of it. And also, as you can clearly see, it's very thin. After turning the end, I file the outside and use a deburring tool to clean up the inside, followed by lightly cleaning up the end using a piece of Scotch-Brite. The next part of the job is to machine the piece of copper that I'm going to use for the centre flue. The machining process is identical to what I've just shown. Notice that I pull the tool away from the work. I find this a much better way of cutting tube because it's less aggressive and the tool tip puts much less pressure on the work itself. Same as before, I used a file on the outside and a deburring tool on the inside. Here you can clearly see what my idea is. The bit that I've cut off the original centre flue which is not shown in this image, will be silver soldered into the inside of the copper centre flue, like this. Then I will have a suitable support that perfectly fits inside the original chimney. It's a bit of a concession, I wanted to use one of the original parts at least. At this stage I haven't decided whether to silver solder the original centre flue part into the chimney, or silver solder it into the new flue tube. It's not important, I'll make the decision nearer the time. I've just realised that because I took the measurement from the original flue tube, which included the chimney mounting, I will have to shorten this slightly so it fits in the right position. I think it's time to use my magical measuring stick. This tells me that the piece of copper tube that I'm going to use for the centre flue is 15 millimetres in diameter. It's a commercial piece of copper pipe. In this clip, I'm measuring the diameter of the original top cap, which appears to be 2.575 inches. Time now to machine the new top cap. I can't use the Boxford for this unless I change the jaws, and then it's not convenient. So it's over to my Smart and Brown lathe to do it this way, which is going to be better because it has automatic travers. And as you've seen before in other videos, it also has a large four jaw. Self centering chuck which really grips the work without marking it. Because these pieces of gunmetal are rough sawn, I'm pushing the first of the pieces into the chuck using the tailstock chuck. Please be aware this is a piece of cast gunmetal and it was never round to start with, so I know it's looking like it's not running very true, but it's going to be a good bit less than this in size, so it doesn't matter, does it? All will be revealed in the fullness of time. The first thing to do is to face across the front, and to do this I'm using one of the lathe tools that I modified recently. These cut beautifully and give a good finish. If you're not lucky enough to have a large lathe in the workshop, you can improvise. I could have fitted the other chuck jaws to the Boxford and turned a register on the piece of gunmetal, then returned the original chuck jaws to the Boxford chuck, and then hold it in the chuck using the register that I turned by using the other jaws, if you see what I mean. In this clip, I'm reducing the diameter of the piece of gunmetal bar to exactly the same diameter as the original brass top cap. And here, I'm checking the diameter with my digital caliper. It is 2.575 inches. As I've just mentioned, I could have used the Boxwood lathe for these operations. This method is quicker and easier though. Having this power crossfeed traverse on the Smart and Brown is incredibly useful. All I have to do is engage the traverse, move the lever to rotate the chuck, and then sit back and relax until the job's done. To avoid the gunmetal chips flying all over the place, I'm running the lathe at a fairly slow speed, although the speed is running at 400% on the video. 
I don't wish to confuse anyone, but I have turned the part around in the chuck for this next operation. I'm once again using the tailstock chuck to push the part into position. It's not quite fully up to the chuck jaws because I need to machine right up to the chuck jaws and this time I don't want to mark them. When I was making the stainless steel cylinder cover for my traction engine, I marked the jaws on my Boxford lathe, but that was no big deal. I just machined across the front with a sharp carbide tip tool and now the chuck is better than ever. Don't forget viewers that these chucks that you're looking at are really cheap. They're from RDG Tools, not very expensive at all, but very good for the money. From the sublime to the ridiculous, I do have a Bernard multi-size collet chuck. That was extremely expensive. I bought it 45 years ago. It's beautifully made. I treat it with respect and I would never dream of remachining any part of it. I remember buying this Bernard collet chuck over 40 years ago and it was £750. I got a slight discount on that price. And by comparison, these modern chucks from RDG Tools are really cheap. And I'm not making derogatory comments. I think they are really cheap and really good value for money. They work well. While I've been talking about different types of chucks and what not to do with them, I've been machining this piece of gunmetal. It's now a really good fit, not a massively tight fit, but a good fit in the top of the piece of copper tube. When I make components that are going to be silver soldered together, I never make them a really tight fit. And the reason for this is you need some space between the parts for the silver solder to run into. And this also applies when using Loctite 603 or any other sort of bonding adhesive. The gap doesn't need to be massive, I'm not talking about a rattle fit here, but it doesn't need to be a piston fit either. Here I'm using a chamfering tool to machine a chamfer on the part of the cap that sits inside the copper tube. Not essential, but it's to allow the silver solder somewhere else to run to, like a channel all the way around the inside. Now it's time to centre drill the hole for the centre flue, followed by drilling the hole using a large twist drill. I do not have a reamer of the same diameter as the centre flue. And that's about it, I think, for this episode. In the next one, I will make the tube plate that fits inside the boiler. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.